What's the least amount of power you've seen go to someone's head? My friend put a cold air intake in his 95 Honda Civic. Some guy was trying to pass him on the freeway and my buddy was like, let's show these guys what real power looks like. Then he floored it. The car gently accelerated to maybe 75 miles per hour before we overtook the other car. But my friend acted like he just won the Indy 500, way back when my younger brother was learning how to drive. He was having a hard time getting the hang of a stick shift in our family's old roller skate of a compact car. We were riding down a boulevard when we pulled up to a red light, right beside some young men in a beat up looking Mustang. As the light changed to green my brother's foot slipped on the pedals and he accidentally revved the engine. The guys in the Mustang gave us a look, and seriously thought we were calling them out to race. They revved their own engine and roared off for about 6 car lengths. Then there was a loud banging sound and black smoke came pouring out from under their hood. My brother and I slowly drove past them as they sat there looking embarrassed as f. They'd just challenged a Chevy Chevette race and lost. I work on a team of programmers. One of the guys is terrible and screws up all his projects. But for some reason he's never been fired. And he's been with the company forever. Somehow. He got it into his head that he had seniority, so whenever the boss would be out of town for a day, or call in sick, he'd immediately start walking around asking people what they're working on and assigning them tasks, as if he were the manager. The actual manager eventually sent the whole team an email clarifying that if somebody was going to be left in charge, she would let us know. His tiny amount of perceived power was completely removed. Equals P. I ran a movie theater. One guy was told to go and do a theater check, which was basically ensure the emergency exit was closed and that no one was doing anything unruly. Dude really got off on telling people to put their feet down. He was studying to go into law enforcement. I was legit scared by how much he delighted in getting into people's faces because he felt he had real authority in this scenario. Respect Mar Authorita. Moderator of a Discord channel. Not the whole server, just one particular channel with a couple dozen people. Out of a server with nearly 10k users, he started tripping. Instituted this insane code of conduct he stole from Wizards of the Coast, including a clause that everyone had to respect him, and not block his messages, or they'd be banned. The absolutely wild thing is no one had ever heard of this guy before. The last time he'd said anything in the whole server was two years prior. Teacher here. We had a school librarian here who berated the children about the most minor infractions and even questioned kids about why they wanted a particular book. She would often yell, this is my library. The kids called her Conan. This reminds me of an incident from high school that I haven't thought about in years. One day in chemistry class, we made ice cream using liquid nitrogen. Everyone brought in ingredients to contribute. My friend happened to sign up to bring vanilla extract. After school that day, we were doing homework in the library. She was rummaging through her backpack and started taking things out as she was searching. Well the second the vanilla extract bottle touched the table, the assistant librarian appeared out of thin air, screeching about how alcohol was not allowed in the school. She kicked my friend out of the library, and then the rest of the group for trying to defend her. Apparently she thought that my friend was secretly drinking vanilla extract to get drunk in school and nothing could convince her otherwise. We had to bring the chemistry teacher to the library to explain the situation and prevent escalating it to the principal. Thankfully he hadn't left for the day, but he almost wouldn't come because he thought we were playing a bad joke on him. At my company of 80 people we have an HR assistant that is inexplicably in charge of the receptionist. She does nothing but make the receptionist's life miserable, and has for the previous 4 stroke 4 receptionists. She'll reprimand them for, their clothes, posture, smiling too much, not enough, arrangement of workspace, cleanliness of workspace, keeping water at the desk, keeping food at the desk, using the bathroom too much, etc. It's like she saves all her anger in her whole life and takes it out on the only person who is obligated to listen to her. My company made the mistake of creating a tiered management system at a team level. So I was lead designer, had three mid-level designers I was responsible for and they each had one junior designer or intern under them. The purpose of this structure is so that I don't have to get involved with every little thing involving the junior designer's work and that they don't have to come directly to me with a problem. How it was interpreted by one of the mid-level designers was that she was now in charge of a section of the concentration camp. 
This particular person didn't really want to be a designer. She has a skill for visuals so she ended up in a role. But really she's more of a business mind. She has terrible trouble understanding that design is an open collaborative task. You give constructive feedback and build up the people around you so that they can become better designers and get a sense of pride in their work. She saw the word manager and thought she was a whip cracker. All I'd hear was no 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 no. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Just constant negative feedback. I stepped in and told her loudly in front of others that we don't say no or wrong in design review and she replied did I ask you? So she's not in charge of anyone anymore. My approach with her now, because I can't get her sacked, is to never give her overly positive feedback. Before I realized she was narcissistic I would have told her this is excellent wow, this is great, but not anymore. The best way to handle a narcissist is to ignore them. They get bored when they're not getting attention. I left a kid in charge of the classroom while I stepped outside for 2 minutes to consult with an administrator. I came back and he had a list of everyone who needed to be suspended. Well did you suspend them? The list was of all the people they didn't like. No one had said or done anything between me stepping into the hall and coming back in. Apart from them writing the list. One time I let my daughter choose what we were doing that day. She constantly reminded me, my boyfriend, and my son that she said we were going to the playground and dictated how and when we had fun there. I had to stop her when she tried to tell her brother it wasn't a good time to pee. But it was honestly funny. The next day was his turn and he chose to just watch Star Trek TNG. So everyone but my daughter had a great day that day. I see my older niece do this all the time to the younger sibling. Okay. Now we are going down the slide, as she drags her sister around. The funniest is when she tries to dictate the rules of a game so that she is guaranteed to win. Works with you 4 year old sister, not with me. You'd think the guy driving the miniature car that writes tickets for me to violations in my town was Genghis freaking Khan. Those people must get so much every day though. Last time I walked up on someone giving me a parking ticket, I said, oh no, well. Okay, it's really hot, if you don't mind, I'm going to cool down my car while I wait for you to finish writing it, they said, you know what, I'm not giving you the ticket, thanks for being nice, I thought to myself, she it if they thought that was nice, people must treat them terribly. Mom had a house cleaner that came every 2 weeks for about 3-4 hours each visit, the cleaner would rearrange mom's things, including items in her curio cabinet kitchen cabinets counters, and other personal areas, like her jewelry box, figurines, and hygiene items in the bathroom. When mom asked her to please stop doing that, the cleaning lady said, this is how I do things. If you don't like it, find someone else. She was probably stealing from y'all. Rearranging makes it harder to tell what's missing. I was in a Renfair group. One a-hole was the assistant guild master he handled the fees and membership paperwork. Because the main guild master didn't want to. He lauded that over other people. Be nice to him. Or maybe your paperwork suddenly went missing. Or dues payment didn't go through. He was also severely overweight and ugly as sin. So when he hit on a girl and she shot him down. He suddenly made things uncomfortable for her which caused a few women to leave. Also, weirdly enough, her paperwork got lost. Or her dues didn't go through somehow. I'm so glad I got out of that group. That was probably the most historically accurate thing about that Renfair. My mum took my dad to court. The court agreed with her on the littlest thing and now she let the power of that go to her head and thinks she is going to win every court order. She has lost at least two. I know I'm super late to the thread, but my mom did the same sh- She's taken my dad to court whenever she remembered a piece of furniture or whatever that she's left behind to force him to give it to her, until he was left with a mostly empty house, then she took him to court for a broken sewing machine, and he was like if you would have just called to tell me you wanted it, I'd have given it to you, now we both owe our lawyers money over something stupid, after that, there was a ceramic frog she apparently made like 700 years ago, she swore he was hiding it from her so she took him to court over it, he swore he didn't have it, she swore he didn't he was either hiding it or had broken it just to make her sad. The judge finally put his foot down and took my dad's side. That if he says he doesn't know where it is, then he doesn't know and you can't force someone to give you something they don't possess. 
She tried to take him back to court over this damn ceramic frog again and the judge refused to even hear it and dismissed it. One year later I'm moving from my rental into a new place, organizing boxes from my attic, and find that goddamn ceramic frog mixed in with various knickknacks I didn't really want but felt obligated to keep. I called my dad and told him and he immediately stopped me and said the less I know, the better. I didn't have it, I don't know where it is, and whatever happened to it, I don't know. Into the trash it went. This was a joke, so I don't know if it counts, but it's pretty perfect timing, as it just happened today. My brother got chosen to be an extra in the new Jurassic movie, and he's staying at my place tonight so he has an hour less to drive tomorrow morning to get to the shoot. He just sent me a fake rider for his room. Homeowners associations. When we first moved to Florida my parents bought a house in an upper middle class subdivision. My dad decided we'd build an external garage and have a driveway perpendicular to the street in front of the house, and submitted details for approval to the HOA agreement. They came back and disapproved, saying they insisted the driveway should instead of perpendicular make a gentle curve of around 45 degrees, longer of course than just a straight shot of pavement which would cost us more. Another time while living at a condo complex with my then girlfriend. We decided to live together but unfortunately she owned a dog and the complex wouldn't allow it. We gave the dog to a dear friend of hers, and I decided I'd actually run to become a board member of the condo association. Sadly nothing came of it. I made a case for allowing small dogs, of charging dog owners extra to keep them on the property. But the board of mostly retirees and a couple of younger working people wouldn't budge. While these associations can be helpful for stuff like using fees you pay them for upkeep of common areas, landscaping, laundry rooms, and with the condos covering any roof maintenance, unfortunately people with way too much time on their hands tend to gravitate to these positions and some relish their wee bit of power way too much. I had a condo in a high rise in Chicago, I closed on a Friday, moved in the large stuff on a Monday and was cleaning and setting things up on and off all weekend. By Tuesday morning I had been there for maybe 4 days. On Tuesday morning I went out to get coffee and some cleaning supplies. When I got back I saw that the metal door was dirty so I sprayed it with some cleaner. Then I realized I had no paper towels. I stepped into the condo, put down my stuff, and grabbed a roll of paper towels which were right there because I was still cleaning the place. Took maybe a minute. I walked out to see two elderly ladies from the HOA who told me that they had been meaning to talk to me about my filthy door, while cleaner was dripping on said filthy door. I asked them if they see the roll of paper in my hand and the cleaner on the door. They gave me a lecture about following the rules and told me that there are nice people here who follow rules. I asked how long had they been meaning to talk to me because I moved in yesterday. That shut them up. They called me troublemaker the whole time I lived there. Whenever they add a new feature at work and it has the ability to track what other people are doing, i.e. a new queue system for a phone program etc, and you can see who is handling something, who is ready to handle something, and who is unavailable, it brings out the back office no title managers with a quickness, I see you've been unavailable for the last half an hour, everything okay, unosh their bill. I was in a meeting with my actual boss. What a shock that the people who do this never actually earn any titles raises and can't figure out why. We just got this in my office. We are supposed to get a few weeks to try it out before it will be declared a resounding success. I'm genuinely curious what the most inconsequential thing is I will be reprimanded for. So far it is waiting 2 seconds from answering the phone to saying my greeting because it sounds too much like a telemarketing call center. I waited the 2 seconds so I could exit a meeting without interrupting it. That was unacceptable. Left my 3 kids to pop to the shop. As I was leaving my 6 years old asked if he could be in charge. For a laugh I said yes. I was gone for maybe 15 minutes. In that time my little dude had called to tell me that his older brothers were being naughty so he's banded them off their tech turns out. Being naughty was not making him some crusher. Also the eldest, nearly 16 was banded off his phone because he wouldn't let him watch the lion guard. He had made a pile of their confiscated tech on the dining table with his toothless plush toy standing guard on top of it. His brothers were so amused by their baby brother's power trip that they complied. I work security for a very popular hospital in Baltimore. We had a new hire take any chance to call someone out on the radio, being late from lunch, being a patrol and not seeing someone stationed at their post, 
He would keep a notebook with him and document on others and wasn't a guy you could show him a shortcut or he would tell on you. Our supervisors decided to put him as a base monitor, gives out orders to what's going on and who should respond to things etc. He had told one of the supervisors to respond to a nurse's station about a complaint. She confirmed but was caught up with another situation putting her on the other side of the hospital. Very large place. A few minutes passed and when he called again she stated she was on her way and he responded I sent you on that assignment 10 minutes ago you need to hurry up. This was a supervisor who, if we kept stats, lead the league in firing security. Needless to say he didn't make it out of his 90 days. I was in a robotics club in high school. We made sure to be safe and always follow proper protocol like keeping hair up and safety glasses on, etc. This one kid was appointed by the adult mentors to make sure everyone had their glasses on since occasionally people would step out for a break and forget to put them back on and sometimes the adults would be busy and not notice. Over time this kid would get so strict and basically find an excuse to call out anyone. One time me and my friend stepped out of the workplace area so we could eat and take a break, and he called us out for having our hair down even though we didn't even have to wear glasses in the break area. SMH how is my hair gonna get caught in some cheese its So, I worked in a call center around 2010 to 2013 for one of the big 3 cell providers in Canada. The usual billing and general customer service shtick, as it was the holidays. They usually found their back office team was horribly swamped with new line activations, and thus it was decided that a group of 20 or so of the best performers would go on outbound sales to boost the number even higher, and for another 20 of us, including myself, to be performing the back office work. What this resulted in was myself and the other lucky 19, not needing to take a single phone call for 6 weeks, and literally just refresh a page, look for new activation requests and process them copy and paste billing address name etc, run a credit check, and if successful with a properly filled out order, assign the phone information and submit it to be processed and shipped. This was a Christmas effing miracle, after a day or two of doing the job, and loving it, especially when in store and kiosk dealers would try and force us to activate a line that they didn't properly submit info for. I noticed that one of our 20 in-house salespeople had several activation requests in a row, which was a bit odd, I pulled them myself and checked, and out of 6, one was processed correctly, while the others clearly had a bit less thought put into them, missing info, mistyped information, etc, I decided you know what, I'm not a fan of this person already, cancelled the 5 requests, and told the others around me to let me handle any of hers for the next little while, this lady put through at least 25 activation requests a day, the average for that week being about 5-8, in what I could only assume would have been a purposeful attempt to try and get more commission on new line activations. I recorded every attempted request and killed off each and every one of them that wasn't 100% perfect while cackling like the wicked witch of the F in West and just passed the list off to my supervisor once the 6 weeks were over. I don't think she was there more than another day or two, 